teacher year 12 philosophy and ethics students. Welcome to Bridging Work Lesson 1. We're going to keep things simple and we're going to dive straight in. We're looking at Pascal's wager. Take notes. Okay, Blaise Pascal was a 17th century French philosopher, mathematician and physicist. And he had quite an influence. In fact, today he still lends his name to several scientific principles and principles in computing. It's his work on probability though which he was most famous for and for our purposes, his famous wager. Pascal was a Roman Catholic, and he believed in God, and he wanted other people to believe in God as well, and everything that goes with that. However, he was also a man of reason, and for Pascal, he thought it was impossible to prove, one way or the other, God's existence or non-existence. He actually thought that God was infinitely incomprehensible, beyond our understanding. There is no way that we could prove his existence until after we die. So to choose whether or not to believe in this life, he thought it had to be down to more than evidence for God's existence. And this is where his wager comes in. Right, for Pascal, he thought we had to measure the costs and the benefits of a decision of to believe in God or not. And when we do this, he thought that we can clearly see that it's better to believe in God than not. This is how his argument works then, to summarise. Pascal said, if you believe in God and you're correct, when you die, you'll receive an eternity of happiness. But if you're wrong, nothing happens. You're just dead. You lose nothing, you gain nothing. On the other hand, if you choose not to believe in God and you are right, you're just dead. You gain nothing, lose nothing. The atheist, when they die, never discovers that they were right all along. However, if you don't believe in God and you are wrong, God does actually exist, when you die you'll face an eternity of punishment. Now, Pascal thought then that the choice was clear. It was always more rational to choose to believe. We can make this a bit more clear if we put this in what's called a decision matrix. I'll pop it down there. So on the decision matrix we can see that to believe in God we have everything to gain an eternity of happiness, heaven. And we actually have nothing to lose. If we believe in God and we're wrong all along, we lose nothing, we're dead. However, if we don't believe in God and we are correct, we gain nothing. But look, we have everything to lose. So therefore, the rational choice, according to Pascal, is always to believe in God. That is his wager. Now, Pascal's wager has a really unique strength to the argument. And the unique strength is this. He is given an argument to believe in God that doesn't require us to actually know God exists. In fact, we don't need to have an argument for God's existence. We can ignore all those arguments, all the different arguments that try and prove God exists. Pascal says we can ignore and we've still got a solid reason to believe in God. That is what is unique about Pascal's wager. So think about um, arguments for God's existence, like the teleological argument. This is one we're going to focus more on the course. The teleological argument is otherwise known as the design argument. It says that when we look at the universe, we can see evidence of design. Evidence of design implies there's a designer, therefore God must exist. We can ignore that argument and the problems with it. You'll look at problems with this argument as well. And we can just say, well, look, we don't actually need to know if God exists or not because it's still always better to believe in God than not on a cost-benefit analysis, as you can see in the decision matrix. Right, I'm going to stop my lecturing right now. I'd like you to do a few tasks. Let's now look at some evaluation of Pascal's wager. I'm not going to go through a detailed explanation of evaluation. That's going to be your job to develop. I'm going to give you five ideas for you to then work with. 
and I want you to flesh these out into uh, detailed arguments. Okay, five ideas. First idea. Does Pascal's wager lead someone to believe in God for the right reasons? Number two. Can we force ourselves to believe in something that we don't just because it's in our best interests? Number three. Does Pascal's wager actually assume, without justification, a particular religious worldview about the afterlife? Number four, related to that, is it a binary choice, as Pascal claims, between belief in God or not believing in God? Or really, is the choice between not believing and belief in a particular God? And we could have thousands, possibly infinite, amount of different choices of what to believe God is like. And just a little bit of help on this one. Think about from particular religions like Christianity or Islam, often it seems to suggest in their holy books that the belief in the wrong God is worse than belief in no God at all. How would that affect the decision matrix if you added on all those columns of different gods? And number five, is it really true to say that if you believe in God and you are wrong, you lose nothing. Haven't you lost something? Think about all the things that a religious believer has to do during their life. If it turns out this was their one and only life, have they not wasted it? Okay, those are five ideas that I'd like you now to develop. Have a look at the second set of tasks.